Okay, thank you very much uh, to the organizer for putting the paper on, on the program. Uh, this is joint work with Claire Sellerier uh, from the University of Zurich. <coughs> and so basically when we think about banker pay and when we, when we listen to what the public opinion is saying, I think it's when, when we acknowledge that if, uh, the, the public opinion doesn't consider Wall Street to be the most meritocratic place uh, in the world. And, and when we look at this quote from Barack Obama, I think it's, it's clearly representative of what many people uh, think about banker Spain. Because there is, there is no debate that bankers are really well paid when you compare to any type of industry, uh, the mean is by far uh, much higher than in other industry. Uh, and then you also have this, uh, this big skewness uh, with some, some workers being extremely well paid uh, in finance. And so both this style of fact has brought a lot of regulatory scrutiny to this sector, uh, with some regulators even stepping in and regulating bankers' pay, and I'm thinking about the European Union uh, for, for instance. And so, to put it also in a larger, in a larger frame, uh, I'm sure you're all, you're all familiar with the work of another French economist, uh, Thomas Piketty, uh, on the growing inequalities and especially income inequalities. Uh, so, the, the level of wages in finance is also often pointed out as one of the drivers of these increasing uh, inequalities. And so, all together, this uh, this fact brings us to really put us uh, some, some weight and better understanding the drivers uh, of banker pay. So the exact research question we will address in this paper is whether wage return to talent uh, are relatively high in finance uh, compared, uh, compared to other sectors. And one further motivation for looking at this question is that in the theoretical literature, uh, there is a wealth of paper uh, that rely on, on talent and return to talent as a key ingredient uh, to, model, uh, to model banker pay. Whereas on the empirical side, uh, there is a shortage of paper looking at, uh, at this, uh, at this uh, animal. And we, we think it's largely due to the challenge of accurately uh, measuring the level of, of that. So to give you a brief preview of our main results, so we first exploit the specificity of the French education system uh, to develop what we think is a very precise and comprehensive uh, measure of talent. Then using this measure of talent, uh, we show that returns to talent are three times higher in finance uh, than in the rest uh, of the economy. And when we look at the time series uh, of, of return to talent, uh, they have more than tripled uh, since the 1980 and almost fully absorb uh, the increase in the finance wage premium that is documented in the literature. And finally, we also have a result showing that return to talent correlate with the structure, uh, the structure of pay. So I think we've, we've learned this morning that French people were very bad at writing laws. Uh, and I will try to convince you that French people are good at some things. And, and one of them, I think, is uh, identifying talent and, and selecting, uh, selecting talented uh, individuals. And so the French system since Napoleon has all been built on this goal of trying to select the best students and bring them, uh, and bring them in some specific school that we call uh, the Grand École. And so uh, in this paper we focus on the engineering school because this is where we have uh, the data. And basically all French engineering school recruit uh, from the same national uh, exam uh, with the top one taking uh, the top student uh, and then going down the, the school uh, uh, lower in ranking going down uh, this national uh, exam. And so this allows us uh, to rank uh, the school uh, by their selectivity rate and we then use uh, this selectivity rate of the school as a proxy, as a proxy for that. And when we think just about uh, using, using like uh, uh, SAT scores for measuring talent, we think we are in a much better uh, setup to capture the talent because of the specificity of the French system. So the way it works is that students, they prepare for two years uh, for this uh, competitive exam. 
and, and there the preparation is very intense with uh, almost 40 hours per week of classes and weekly examination both oral uh, and written. And, and, and so we argue that the incentive, uh, so the talent constraint is binding uh, due, uh, due to both this very structured uh, structured uh, schedule plus the high stake of uh, the exam and so at the end of the two years uh, they enter into the written competitive exam uh, that tested for many hours uh, their, uh, their proficiency in, uh, in a set uh, of fields which is then followed by an oral examination that also captures uh, communication skills and interper interpersonal skills uh, on, on the broader program. And so when we look at the selectivity rate of the school, uh, of the engineering school in France, uh, Ecole Polytechnique, which is kind of the French uh, ITAM, uh, is, is the most, uh, is the most uh, selective, uh, selective one with around 2% uh, selectivity rate. And then you see that uh, uh, if, we, if we group them by 10 categories, uh, we really span the whole spectrum uh, of selectivity uh, in, in our in our circle. And so something, unfortunately, we don't, uh, we will not be able to observe. Uh, it's the productivity in terms of our of our graduates. So what we did is we look at a field where it's easier to observe productivity, which is economic uh, research, and we've looked at the citation count of researchers uh, that have graduated from French uh, engineering school, and what we find is that the ones from the top school are the ones uh, that, that are getting the most citation count, and when we randomly pick one alumni, uh, we find that indeed they seem to be doing a good job. Uh, they seem to be quite talented. And so we were potentially concerned that there, there was something uh, going on in this school, that people might actually learn something at school. Uh, and so we also, uh, we also developed a within school measure of talent uh, to absorb any potential treatment effect our students uh, could, uh, could get. Uh, and so what we do is that because there are many students that instead of spending two years to get in, uh, they redo the second year to get another chance at the competitive exam. And so we use this, this specificity and argue that the ones that took three years instead of two are less talented uh, than the ones that get, that get straight in. And because we have variation within school, we can put full fixed effect uh, that fully absorb uh, potential treatment at the school level. And so that's just the distribution uh, of, uh, of age, of time to get into, uh, into the school. So in terms of data, we have some uh, very nice data set that is provided to us by the Engineering School Alumni Association, uh, which, uh, which uh, mainly I mean, it covers almost all engineering schools in France. And it's a survey, so we don't have everyone answering, uh, but we have 7% of the old French engineering population uh, that has been answer answering to us. And what is very nice is that uh, the, the time span is very large, from 1983 to 2011, so that's only 15 surveys, because they get more frequent uh, recently. And what this data uh, provides us with, uh, obviously it's an amateur, which we will use for our talent measure, so that's quite important. Uh, it's providing us with compensation, both fixed uh, and, and variable. Uh, and then it's providing us with a wealth of information on people, uh, demographic, and for instance, uh, even background, uh, what, what jobs their parents had, uh, whether they're married, if they have children, and so on. And so as in any survey, I think there is always uh, uh, the potential for a selection, uh, selection bias. So what, what we did uh, to ensure that we had no selection bias is that we replicated existing uh, results uh, from the literature. And what we find is extremely consistent with what is already established uh, in the literature. Uh, first is that uh, finance is an industry where you are uh, the better paid. Uh, then that this premium, this wage premium in finance has been increasing uh, over time dramatically. And then that this increase is concentrated on the right end of the distribution. So it's really the top earners that are driving, uh, that are driving this, uh, this dynamic. And so this chart really represents our main result. So 
So basically what it shows, it's the predicted wage uh, by our group of talent, uh, 10 being the lowest talented people within our sample. So they are all engineers, uh, so it's a rather homogeneous population, and that's what we like, that we are really focusing on the right term of the talent distribution. And so, and, and, and then it goes up to one, which is the top, uh, the top talented individuals uh, in our sample. And what we see is that for every industry, uh, there is a, a sensitivity to talent, uh, which is reassuring. But what is quite striking is that the wage sensitivity to talent is much higher in finance than in other industries, even industries that, that are pretty comparable, uh, like uh, consulting, and even in industries that are famous for paying very well, uh, like uh, like. Uh, and so if we look more, more, so that was just a chart, but if we look more carefully uh, in terms of uh, econometrics, mm -hmm. so our specification is quite simple. Uh, we regress the log wage on a series of dummy for industry, controlling, controlling for talent, and then controlling for uh, all the demographic we have in our data. So this is exactly what the literature has already done, and when we do so, we do observe that finance people are, are much more paid than in other sectors. And so the contribution of the paper is really to add to that the wage sensitivity to talent by industry. So we have an interaction term uh, between the industry dummy uh, and our measure and our measure of talent. <coughs> and so basically, before the interaction, what we observe is that within, I mean, among engineers, Finance workers, uh, they make 25% uh, more wage, even controlling for their level of talent. So this is the finance wage problem. Uh, but what is very interesting is that once uh, we include uh, our interaction between finance and talent, so first we have this very uh, significant coefficient uh, on the interaction term, meaning that returns to talent are much higher uh, in finance and in the rest in the industry, the, in the rest of the economy, sorry. So they are three times higher. And what is also quite interesting is that it almost fully absorbs uh, the finance wage premium that we were documenting uh, in the first, uh, in the first uh, regression. And so our result is robust to a uh, specification where we use our alternative measure of talent. Remember that is the number of years uh, to get uh, into the school. And what is quite important is that in this specification, uh, we can put school fixed effects that get rid of potential uh, treatment effects. So what we also did uh, to try to, uh, to add uh, individual fixed effect to even better absorb potential uh, unobserved uh, variables. So we don't have, unfortunately, we don't have a panel data set, but what we have is a, a repeated cross-section. And because we have so many uh, variables, so many demographic variables, uh, so uh, the, their year of birth, their, their sex, and I think the ones that really give us, uh, that give us a lot of traction is father and mother occupation. So with that, we're able to identify a rather large sample of individuals across time. And we can then run a panel, a panel regression on that, uh, absorbing, absorbing for individual fixed effect. So obviously here, we're only measuring the change of wage for people joining the finance, uh, the finance industry. So that's the exact same person with the exact same level of talent uh, that join the finance industry. And we, see, we look whether the jump in his, uh, in his payroll is explained by his level of talent. And, and again, what we do find is that his level of talent uh, fully, uh, fully the, so the interaction term, fully absorb uh, the premium that he's getting uh, for, joining, for joining finance. <laughs> and so what, what, what is also quite important in finance because we know that there's a lot of heterogeneity in terms of, of finance workers, I mean all finance workers are not, uh, are not equal uh, so what we also use is one variable that we have in our data set which is, which is the exact job title uh, of, of, the finance, of the finance worker and so within finance we can put finance job uh, fixed effect 
to make sure that our results are not driven by the top guys only going to training and the lower schools not, not reaching uh, this, uh, this occupation. So we are really uh, uh, looking at uh, people doing the same job but uh, that have graduated uh, from, uh, from different schools. And again, again, our result goes through. And if we group the different uh, jobs in two categories, basically front office versus the rest of the world in finance, uh, we see that our results are even stronger, even stronger uh, for uh, people in front office. And so one last important uh, result uh, that uh, we document uh, in, in the paper, it's uh, it's to relate to this established fact by Filippo Andrechev that the finance wage premium has been increasing uh, over time. And so what we do is we run our same regression but on, on three subsamples, the 80s, the 90s and the 2000s. And what we observe is that the return to talent in finance have been strongly increasing over time. Uh, so they have been, they have been uh, uh, almost tripling. And again, this absorbs uh, the finance wage premium uh, in, our, in our regression. And so on top of this result, of course, we run a battery of robustness check to try to rule out uh, potential alternative mechanisms for our result. So I won't have time to go through them, uh, but please uh, feel free to read the paper and look at our, at our table uh, where, we, where we discuss that. Uh, and so, I mean, the last step of our work, I think, is try to relate it to, to theory. So we are very comfortable to have this strong, uh, this strong salary fact. And the question is now, how does it fit uh, into the theoretical literature uh, on uh, on, on bankers' pay, and we feel it's, it's consistent with these two main theories, uh, the competition for talent uh, theory, uh, with, with a paper from, from Gabriel and Landier, which we, we have clearly in mind, uh, and it's also, it's also broadly consistent uh, with the theoretical literature on rent extraction, and, and more specifically, more al hazard uh, in, uh, in finance. So the fact that we have uh, higher return to talent in finance uh, combined with this strong uh, skewness, this is exactly the prediction of the literature and competition for talent and what are called the superstar effect. Uh, so we are, we are strongly consistent uh, with, uh, with this uh, literature. And one argument why it would be the case that higher returns uh, are, uh, uh, that returns are higher in finance than in the rest of uh, the economy is that because in finance uh, talent is more scalable than in the rest uh, of the economy and for instance we think uh, that our results on front office which are arguably the, mo the most scalable jobs uh, within finance uh, are, are consistent uh, with, this, uh, with this mechanism. But in terms of, of rent extraction, actually, because uh, we know that uh, talented workers are typically uh, more costly to, mo to monitor and more costly to incentivize, uh, typically because they have uh, better outside options, uh, I mean, they, can, they can go easily in, in also well-paid uh, well jobs. So in that sense, uh, our result could also be driven by moral, moral hazard effect. I think one one, one result which I, I find a bit harder to reconcile with this theory is the fact that uh, our, our result is robust to job uh, title fix effect. And you would think that the majority of uh, moral hazard is more related to the job you're doing than to the type of individual uh, individual uh, you are. And so just to, uh, to conclude uh, on the paper, uh, so in this, in this uh, project, uh, what, we, uh, what we document is that return to talent are, are singularly high in finance uh, compared to the rest of the economy, and that they have been increasing uh, over time. And what it means is that the finance wage premium that we, uh, we largely discuss uh, in, in, the, in, the public, in the public debate, uh, it has been disproportionately uh, allocated uh, to the most talented worker within, within this industry. I guess this is my, my last uh, presentation or discussion with the staff affiliation. Uh, so, as uh, this 
some of you might know I'm joining the ETAM department team. So uh, great paper, uh, great read. Let me just quickly summarize. So the topic, as you heard, is in, in, in the intersection between finance and, and, and labor economics. Lots of debate about the trends. Lots of debate on the media about, you know, should we do something about it? You know, government regulation and so on. Uh, the idea of the paper is, let's look at the differential returns to talent. And maybe <clears throat> this differential returns to talent could explain the trends that we observe and, uh, in, in, in the finance industry and, and, and so on. Uh, so <clears throat> as uh, it was discussed, there, there are <clears throat> fundamental drivers of, of why these trends are changing over time, competitions, the economics of superstars, technological change. There's a huge literature in labor economics talking about these forces, and, and sort of this paper drives home the idea that differential returns to talent could be important. The, the data uses a, a time invariant, and, and let me highlight this, time invariant talent measure. Uh, it's measured based on the rankings of French institutions, okay, French engineering schools, and there are basically two measures across schools, the, the national rank of admitted students within schools, the age of the graduate. Um, <clears throat> the empirical tests basically are compensation tests across talent pools, industries, and time. But I would say that the, the, the most sort of uh, salient test is one that looks at <clears throat> whether people in finance that are talented are <clears throat> increasingly and differentially rewarded uh, in their compensation. So what are the main results of the paper? Again, so let's start with the basics. Finance people earn more relative to others. So that's confirmed, that's well known. Uh, but then they enjoy a higher wage premium since the 80s. Okay, again, sort of we know it. Uh, but I would say where, where <clears throat> the paper sort of fleshes out new things is that <clears throat> talent explains the pay gap. Uh, when you use this, this talent that measures based on the educational background of, of the institutions, you do see that the premium is a function of talent. This is no, this is something that the paper uh, uncovers. And at the end, sort of the paper links this to the variability of the compensation for the individuals. So again, let me just summarize my comments. I think it's a hugely important uh, topic in the literature. Uh, so I, I think uh, the authors should be applauded for you know going after big questions, even though you know the education might not be perfect. So it's a great uh, a great read again. The idea is super simple: link time and compensation. Uh, <clears throat> straightforward insight. You know even you know you know your four year old kid perhaps would, would get this. Uh, <clears throat> uh, fantastic setting uh, and data. French educational system again. It's, extremely meritocratic, highly competitive, high stakes setting. And uh, they link this with very cool uh, survey data that has compensation, family background. And again, the takeaway, the thing you want to remember from this paper is that the sensitivity of wages <clears throat> to talent is increasingly higher in finance relative to other disciplines. So that's the paper. Now let me focus on four <clears throat> sort of comments. So first, the research question, then sort of uh, what's driving the effects that they're capturing. Um, I had a, a little bit of a hard time in getting a handle on that. Uh, then we get to the empirical models, and then raise some issues about external validity, given that the setting is, is quite unique. Uh, so research question. Uh, <clears throat> so again, the paper, the objective is very clear. I sort of described it, and it was presented super, super transparent. But I, I was thinking as I was reading the paper, what theory of compensation are we rejecting? Uh, I mean, to some extent, it's the link is obvious, talent compensation. But as I, as I think about this issue as a financial economist, I basically don't think of a, a reasonable model where this prediction should not bear in the data. Okay, so I, I think it would be nice to sort of take it to the next level. Uh, I mean, I think it's, it's a very important contribution but then when I say, okay, can I reject a theory? Uh, it seems like most of the theories I could rule, I, I could think of, I could not rule them out. Now, people could get compensated because they enhance value. And it was, again, uh, paper sort of clearly shifting towards productivity enhancing uh, logic. But I could also think about activities that are value neutral. People in the finance industry trying to do activities to reallocate rents 
not add value in society, we just get more to themselves over time. Uh, and I could also think about people who are doing value destruction, transactions that do not add value to society, but yet leave more money in the financial sector. Now again, the paper sort of underscores one and, and sort of tries to build theories of competition that underscore one, but really as it was highlighted in the presentation towards the end, they cannot reject two or three. Okay, and that is the source of tension in the literature. The source of tension in the literature is not whether you get paid a lot or not. Nobody's complaining about the Google guys getting paid like crazy. People are complaining about people in finance <clears throat> getting paid like crazy because they don't see the value added That's clearly. Uh, <clears throat> another example, you know, talented people are maybe better at, at, at stealing. I mean, some people in this country say, oh my God, we don't really want politicians to be that smart because they could actually steal the whole thing. Uh, okay, so same thing applies in finance. Okay, so a few suggestions here. I would say that unless the test goes to a very narrow setting like academ academic achievement where you sort of have an exam to prior what's good or bad, I, I think it's, 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 it's sort of, the tone is still sort of too strong on, on the seems to be good. All right, let me speed up because uh, really give me uh, looks. All right, so the second thing is I was thinking, okay, are these effects reasonable, large, uh, or not? So, <clears throat> so why do talented people in other industries don't move into connect? And the paper is completely silent in terms of equilibrium, okay, in terms of quantity responses. Okay, so I, I would say, well, you know, in a market that is free, <clears throat> free, entry and exit, you know, even if you have higher rewards to begin with, people flow in. As a result, no effect. But this is completely ignoring the paper. Again, huge contribution to begin with, but we need sort of to take it to the next level. Uh, now, if markets are not clear, the size of the wage gap or the increase over time is a function of friction. All right? So we need to think about what's driving this friction. Again, that's not really in the paper. So the, the puzzle is again, why identical pattern? So the, 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 the pitch of the paper is positive. If you're smart, you get paid more. There's a, an identical version of the paper that says, well, if you're smart, you get paid less. Okay, so that seems completely inefficient. Okay, so again, we need to think about the economics of this. So what I would say would be very important is why is it that market for extreme talent do not clear? Okay. And in some cases, like in the CEO market, you allude to the CEO markets. You know, there are only one person that could manage the largest firm in the economy. For some of the jobs that these engineers are doing, that's not so clear. Um, and I would say it's also important to have not only the, the friction, but also quantities in mind. Uh, what is a plausible model that gives me the quantities that, that you achieve, like three times? Or can I think of a friction that only gives me a one time effect? Uh, I think that would be super helpful. Now, the empirical model. Now, we know what drives the result. Something that is varying over time. Okay, the rewards to finance are changing over time. They're increasing for super talented people. Now, what we don't know, given the talent mistakes, we don't know what's driving that change. Okay, and again, identification, the paper is completely silent about this. Now, again, it's making an important contribution, but the reader, okay, is going to be thinking about what is happening. How can you tell me it's talent if talent is not changing over time? So it's the rewards for talent, but then where are the rewards from talent coming from? So I'm thinking, what is changing over time? Are people becoming more greedy? Did foreign banks establish themselves in, in France? They were not there before. One of the positive things of French people and, and Mexican people is that many of them, the best people want to work for government. In the US, most, most of the most talented people want to work for industry. Did that change? Now, if we start to, to, to think about something that is changing, we might be able to explain some of these effects. Uh, now, again, <clears throat> that would explain some of the reward effect, but maybe not. Uh, but again, it's something that is changing. Now, in terms of the specification linking it, um, I'll speed up. To the theory, I think <clears throat> most of this specification should be strongly nonlinear. Rosset, superstars. Okay, you're, you're not thinking about a linear specification. You're really worried about the, the, the very top. Uh, if you look at the data actually empirically, it's true that if you go from group three to group one at the very top of talent, you got huge 
rewards, 44 increase in pay, but if you go from group five to three, which is a comparable move, <coughs> basically the salary is flat. Uh, another thing, the timing of effects. I think college is very important for your first job, five years out, maybe 10 years out. I've done work in the United States for whether the college predicts where you end when you're 50, very poor predictor of success. Early on, very strong predictor. So again, address the why now question. Uh, I mean, the Landier uh, literature on CEOs has the same problem. They say because firms become larger, then compensation is higher. But firms got larger in Japan, and nothing happened. Firms got larger in the 60s in the US, and nothing happened. So the question of why now, uh, recent graduates and then alternative specification would be cool. I'm out of time. Uh, last thing, external validity. I'm thinking, okay, we're talking about engineers in, in France, and I don't know whether they're comparable to the finance jobs that we think about in the United States. If I look at the salaries, they seem <clears throat> lower. Uh, if I think about France, I think that job turnover in France is harder than in the US. People move a lot in the United States. In France, it's harder to move to, to be fired. Uh, <clears throat> So I would say be upfront about it. I think there are ways to, to compare the data relative to the United States and maybe do a little bit more work at the top end of the distribution that is more likely to be comparable to the United States. So just to summarize, <clears throat> what we find is that talented works in finance earn more over time. The setting is great. There are some inference concerns, but I would say this should not be interpreted as, as a, a harsh criticism of the paper. Quite the contrary. This is a great setting, super ambitious, great uh, research agenda. It's just a matter of you know, taking it to the next level, maybe different papers. Uh, I don't know, but I, I, I really enjoy it.